All right, so I want to show you something really cool, right? Well, it's not it's not cool, but you'll see what I mean. Right now, I'm on the server, right? So the game is running, and I'm on the server, right? And I'll explain the difference in a bit, because, you know, that, that is the point of the video. As you can see, this part is white. And if I click on this part, I can see the brick color is white, or medium stone gray, some something, I don't know, some stupid name system. If I switch back to client, so if I switch back to, like, what the player sees, the part is red. And the reason the part is red is because when I added the part, I changed it on the client. So I changed, I, 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 like I made it red on the client, but not on the server. So in short, what this means is that only I will see this part as red, but all the other players, like assuming, assuming I didn't change it for all the other clients as well, if I only change the part for my client only, then only my client will see the changes. But on the server, everyone else will see that the part is still white. Right, so we so we can stop that, and I want to get a bit more in depth into this because like this has been the cause, at least for me, for a lot of errors. Right, so let me show you what I mean. So you know, just like have a thing open if you want, you know, add a part, or you can just keep watching. You know, have that little entertaining video in the background. Um, so I added a part. You know, it's it's white right now. So whatever the part is over here, right? So before I run the game, like whatever properties I have here, so whatever I see here that's going to be the server, right? So if I change the part over here to red, for example, and then I play the game, then, you know, we see, okay, on the client, the part is red, and on the server, the part is also red. Makes sense, right? If I, on the server, change this part to be, you know, sign, and then I go back to my client, then it's sign, right? Because any changes that are made on the client are also replicated I mean, sorry, any changes that are made on the server are also replicated to the client, right? Because the server is like the objective truth of the game, right? Um, however, the client can kind of like have its own filters on things, kind of modify things um, that like it sees, right? So this is where stuff like exploits come in actually, right? Um, I'm sure you've like heard of this, like, like, you know, like wall hacks and everything. Well, the way wall hacks work in, on you know, like, po like poorly secured games is that the client is just asking the game, like, hey, listen, can you just render, you know, like, all, all the characters through the wall so I can see, right? And then, like, what a secure game would do is, you know, you know, so the client is asking the server, hey, I need to see these people, even though they're behind the wall. And then, this, and like, you know, that message gets sent to the server, and then, you know, someone writes code on the server that, that checks, and then the server's like, actually, no, you're not supposed to be doing that. So then it declines the offer, right? So this is kind of how exploiting works, by the way, right? So like a client sends a message to the server and then the server's like saying, actually, no, I'm like that, that shouldn't be happen, right? And then it doesn't let it do anything. So, so the server is like the security guard. The server checks whether something is actually true or not, whether something is supposed to happen. The client just kind of like asks for things from the server for the, for the most part, right? So if your game is unoptimized and you don't check anything on the server, then the client can do literally anything, right? Uh, for example, right now I'm on the client, and if I change this part, um, for example, if I change it, uh, can collide. Or actually, no, probably not can collide. Um, I, I, I okay, let, let's let's see let's see on the server, right? I set it to anchored, right? So it's not gonna fall or anything, and I'll I'll set its size to be like this big, right? So and in like can collide is true, right? So if I go on the on the client. I cannot walk through, right? And, you know, no one can, can walk through. Let's say this is a wall that you're not supposed to walk through it, right? So this is true on the server, and because it's true on the server, it's true on the client. However, sometimes what an exploiter might do is, you know, they might install, like, some, like, hack, hacking software or whatever, and what that does is it lets them modify the client. They're never able to modify the server, like, un unless you have scripts which, like, allow the client to change stuff on the server, obviously, but they're ne never able to access the server only the client. However, here's what happens. If on the client I say, okay, this part is actually not collidable, right? Guess what? Now I can walk through. And on the server, I'm through the part, right? So the client is telling the server, hey, listen, like, because the thing is the client is telling the server what it sees, right? Um, and it's seeing that this part can collide as false. So it's saying, okay, I can move through this part. And then the server doesn't mind, right? I mean, okay, client, the client is telling me what it's doing. I'll just, you know, like take whatever the client is doing and I'll move it onto the server for everyone else to see. Um, 
Yeah, but then if we check on the server, like, yeah, the can collide is still true, right? So it should be collidable, but it's not. So that so that's something that ex exploiters can do, for example, right? Um, if I do something like, let me see. Um, I mean, I, I guess that's basically it for this example. Like, the way also you would, like, fix this maybe, you know, if you're, like, kind of worried that this might be an, an exploit. Um, there's many solutions. I think one of the solutions is, like, whenever like a player like intersects a part like whenever you know part dot touched is true um or like not not true what, what am i saying whenever the part dot touched event fires then you're like hey you know is this part collidable so you check on the server and if the part isn't like meant to be you know walk through if the part if the, if the can collide if the part is true then you can just move the player outside i i just rambled there my bad but um the, again the idea here is that the server is, is meant to act like the check. It's the objective truth. While the client is kind of like what you see, it can be modified by, you know, like players playing using external software. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the idea of client versus server. One thing, one last thing I'll leave you with, by the way, is, um, oh yeah, and the part reset back to how it was. Um, you can think of client versus server, and this is an example I really like. Um, you can think of it as like, color blindness in a way right so let's say we have this white part right and then you know on the server so on the objective like real world um let's say this is what is this i don't know flour okay this this is gonna be flour like like flour they use in cooking not like the, the not like a flower you know what you know what i'm talking about right so yeah we have this white block of flour flour is white right we, we know this and then the majority of people you know they are like okay yeah flour is white However, on the client, what if someone is colorblind, right? And so instead of seeing white, they see this. So to them, flower is this color, right? Now, the objective truth is that flower is still white, right? Like we know, okay, the truth is flower is white. You can't really change this. But this person isn't lying or anything. Like they see this as green, right? This is effectively the main difference that you should know between server and client, right? Server is the objective truth of the game. It's what gets replicated to every single client. So every single client gets like a copy that that is, you know, updated every every like frame um, of the game of what's happening. And then the clients, you know, whenever the player moves or does anything, it sends those movements, it sends the information back to the server. So then the server updates the player movement which then also gets updated for all the other players and so on and so on, right? So there's always a constant exchange between the server and the client. And again, the issue is sometimes the client may, may send faulty information, which makes no sense. Like, for example, I, I could tell the server somehow with an exploit that, hey, actually, I can fly, right? I, I don't know if an exploit like that exists on Roblox, but like, hey, I could just fly, right? Or like like aimbotting, for example, that's what people aimbot, right? Um, and so if your game is poorly optimized or, I mean, you know, poorly has poor security stuff, then, you know, you don't do well, a well enough of a check to see if the client is actually legit. And then, you know, the server doesn't check well enough and, and server's like, yeah, go, go right through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that instant 180 flick headshot on this guy seems legit. I'll let you pass. Um, and that's, that's basically it. If you've ever played a game and you've like rubber banded. And in case you don't know, rubber banding is like when the game, when you're either hacking or when the game like just thinks you're hacking because you're playing really well. And then it starts almost like sending you back, right? Like trying to move, you're trying to jump and it doesn't let you, it like flings you back, right? That's what basically happens, right? So the client is trying to move, trying to jump, you know, it's sending messages, messages to the server. Hey, listen, I'm trying to move, I'm trying to jump. But then the server's like, no, listen, something's up, okay? I don't trust you. So then it takes those, you know, like, like events that, you know, players moving, players shooting, players jumping, and it's saying, no, this isn't happening. So then like the player tries jumping and then the server is like, no, we're not doing that. And so immediately like it sends the, the server sends the new like updated version back to the client, which is that they've never moved in the first place. So like the client kind of sees them, you know, jump a bit. And then the server says, no, no, you're too suspicious. And then flings them back. That's kind of what rubber banding is, right? When the game thinks you're too good or when you're actually just too good, um, as in you're hacking. Um, the last thing I'll leave you with is how you can, th th you may encounter this error at some point and I just want to like let you know about it, right? Let's say I had a script, right? In the work, in the workspace. 
and then let's say um, I needed to access a part. So I had a, I had a part over here, right? Part, like so. Um, and then, yeah, so I have a part. And then what I say is, for example, let's, let's just, I'll wait like, I don't know, 10 seconds. And then I'll print out workspace dot part, right? Again, this is useless. This is a useless script, right? But let's say you have a script which eventually wants to find a part, right? Um, and then let me show you something. So I'm going to play the game, right? And then let's say while the script is waiting, something happens, right? And then the part just gets deleted like so. Uh, but then like, but then like, let's say a new part gets added. Okay. I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little slow on that. All right. Um, let, let me, let me, let me just do this again real quick. Let's wait. I don't know, 15 seconds. Right. Um, so what we'll do is I'm going to go, go here, right. I'm going to add a, add a part. And then in the here, over here, I'm going to remove the server part. So we have a part in the workspace, right? Like so you're, you're on the client. You can see that there's a part, but then this script, right? Part is not a valid member of workspace workspace. So it's trying to look for, okay, workspace.part, workspace why doesn't it see it, right? I had this error so many times where like, it's telling me, hey, part is not a valid member. And I'm like, what do you mean it's not a valid member? Like it's right here workspace part i would like did i like leave a space in the name or something like was it like part spaced or something like that that can't be it and then i never even knew that this was a thing right and then when you check on the server then you're like okay there's no part here so there's a part for me on the client but then there's no part on the server right and because this is a server script it, it won't check for the clients it, it only checks for stuff on the server now if you were using like a local script for example right then the local script will check like what you see locally, right? Not entirely what's on the server. So that's basically server versus clients, right? Server versus local. Um, yeah, again, because it's a server script, it only looks on the server. And because there's no part, it says part cannot be found, even though we see a part. If this was a local script, it would find the part because it would check our local view of the game. Um, and so, yeah. I guess that's that's basically everything you need to know. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, of course, leave me many comments. I, I love comments. Um, check the comments. I have a newsletter. If, give me your email so I can send you cool stuff, I guess. Um, and yeah, I deleted everything that I added. And we're back to basics. Thank you for watching.